everybody, welcome in and thank you for tuning into another heck uh, episode of Hex Dex Dex Tex with the Hex Tex. Um, I'm Mythic Fishbum here as always with Endormi. Hey. And uh, we've got some sweet little brews for you guys. Um, I don't know who wants. Do you want to go first, Endormi? You go first. You go first. Okay. <laughs> so I'm playing a, a Blood Ruby Agro deck that I call the Bansai Charge. As you take a lot of uh, self inflated damage with your troops. So I'm playing 24 resources with an even, even, uh, even split of uh, Blood and Ruby and two shards of Fate. As for my one drops, I'm playing the only ones that I really have available on these colors that is Fang of the Mountain Gods and Savage Raiders. Basically, two power one drops uh, that go really, really well with uh, with Gorfis that we'll talk after the war uh, later. As my only removal spell on the main deck, I have four burns that can go to the face if needed, and, kill, and can do some uh, really nice tricks with the deck. As you can potentially burn your own Inquisitor for to be able to replay it and, and burn or to cancel the uh, the life game from a troop. Uh, for my for two drops, I have Shame Gladiator with the with the HGM, four of those, uh, two Ruby Pyro, uh, four Ruby Pyromancers. The Ruby Pyromancers basically buff. Uh, all the all, all the things in the deck, but my my one my one power one drops, which makes everything uh, much more deadly. It goes specifically um, really really well with claws, shentoff, and the um, falconer and the hero power. As the hero power gets uh, an additional plus one for free, claws becomes six powers, which means it can trade with uh, with cavalry. A inquisitor being uh, f four is four damage to the face. Every time you replay it, if you get it multiple times, it gets multiple and uh, inspires, so it's even more damage to the face. And with Falconer, it inspires all the Falcons and the, and the Falconer, so it double dips. So basically, Pyromancer really, really works with all the creatures it inspires it with. The Shame Gladiator is just um, two damage to the face with haste. You take two, two damage, but usually your life total is not too much of an issue. We are playing uh, against the slower decks. It has the three drops and another uh, troop that deals damage to ourselves. It is called, in this case, it's called the Mountain God, which is a 5 4 4 3. And the, although the, um, the drawback can be really, really bad against some decks, you just have to you just have to think that since you, you played and bash with it every turn, and you do not care what happens to this troop, the worst that it can happen is that it can get inner conflicted. But uh, it's usually not going to to matter that much if you take the, a, a couple more damage against uh, a control deck. Because if you don't win by like turn seven, there's no way for you to win, or close to no way to to win. So basically, just a, a five four that attacks every turn with a little bit of a drawback for three. E in the four cost, we have the Shinto Inquisitors with the Destruction Gem, which means that every time he enters play, it deals uh, damage equal to his attack to a. Uh, your op our opponent, which is usually you play it and you deal three to the face, potentially four. If we have Pyromancer, it synergizes very well with the permanent uh, boost of Corfis too. So we can attack for four and then for five, and if they block any of those attacks, uh, we can replay next turn and go to the face. So it's a really nice card uh, that gives us some reach and replayability against uh, sweepers. Although this cost is a little bit um, abusive and we are probably not going to be able to play it more than uh, twice. It's still really 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 solid and it goes really well with the with the deck overall. Uh, to win the deck we have uh, 4 Royal Falconers. Super super good cards, really good with Golfi, it's really good with Pyromancer. It puts so much uh, damage on the board for just 4 resources. And even if they deal with the Falconer, or, they, or Falcons can still get inspired by Ruby Pyromancer. So they're still a threat, and they are especially good with Gorfis. It also gives the deck some kind of evasion. So it's uh, really, really nice. So basically, all of um, of our four drops uh, usually get us more than than one, uh, than plus one on virtual counter advantage. So that's really nice. And to end the day, we just four Gorfis. Uh, if we play it on turn four, it usually ends the game. If we are on the play. And uh, again, really, really good with uh, with some synergies in between the deck. But overall, just makes the, the deck much more explosive if there was no gore fist. So now let's go to our reserves. For the reserves, I have uh, three Bonesmith, 
3 Embass by Witch, three, uh, 4 Giant Ghost Flies, 2 Blood Arrows and 3 Murders. The Bonesmith are here especially against other aggressive deck, especially the, the Ghost Storm deck, as the Bonesmith hits uh, a lot of the of the troops that are really annoying and powerful. It can hit uh, Lord Benjamin, it can hit Ruby Pyromancer, it can hit Royal Falconer. It can hit, if, if we are playing against Orcs, it hits Savage Raider, uh, Arena Brawler, and uh, another bunch of uh, creatures. So they are really, 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 really nice and really versatile against other fast decks. And they are still can be, be still decent against Wild or other decks like that, as they can hit Holding Braves or other key creatures. The Embers Power Witch, basically, it's uh, against those decks that have uh, a lot of life gain. Usually, those the damage shells. It is still can be it's uh, a decent card against uh, other aggressive decks, as the Swiss Strike can be really, really annoying for for our decks to deal with. Unfortunately, the double thresholds makes it uh, super clunky to have it on the main deck, so we only want to draw it when it's going to to do some work for sure. So that's the reason it's on the sideboard and not on the main. Um, uh, we have uh, four giant cost flies, which gives us another additional three drop that we don't have many on the deck to smooth our curve. It also gives us some kind of evasion, um, and the card and the discard can be really really good against control decks. It's also uh, a flyer that can block uh, uh, or jump stuff that could be really really problematic. So it's just really really nice against control basically. Uh, two blood auras against against other aggressive decks or when our uh, our own damage is just too much for for us to raise effectively. Blood aura is really nice in a bunch of troops that we play. It's especially nice on uh, claw, as we can basically get a a six five which uh, with life drain with no drawbacks for three plus the blood aura. It's really really nice. It's also also super nice with Inquisitor as we make it a permanent 4-2 that every time he enters play deals 4 and, and, and gains 4. Just really 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 good. Uh, I don't have them on the main deck because I just want to be as aggressive as possible. So that's the reason they are on the side. And to end the, the side where I have 3 murders and they come in substitution when the points are just not, in, not enough. When people just play bigger creatures or they get angels for free. Just a, a better way for, for us to kill them. And just to round everything up, we have uh, Polkas or Champion, which is fantastic against, uh, with uh, in conjunction with Core Fist. This is basically the, the reason we played. Uh, that's basically the deck, so now Mythic is going to be talking about his. Alright, so um, I'm playing a deck called um, Ascending Rage. I've been just fooling around with that, I was playing with Ruben Guns a little bit, and it's kind of sweet, so. Um, I want to try it against some more kind of competitive decks, so that's why we did this video with it. Um, as you can see here, we have 11 diamonds, um, 10 rubies, and 4 shards of fate just to get our resources. We're not that clunky in the double threshold, so we could actually probably cut down a little bit of the ruby or diamond. Um, but we definitely want our double resources early with the rage fires and the fulminations and such, so I um, figured I'd try it out. It's, you know, it seems like a solid base. We have, I haven't really been messed up on resources at all yet, so it seems fun to me. Um, we've got the one stone skin, which is a nice way to protect our our, our actual threats like Living Totem and uh, Ascendant. Um, got one burn to the ground as a way we can kind of finish the game or get a kill off some four drops if we kind of have a hard time doing um, with the current deck. We could escalate rage fires and such to get there, but other than that, we have a hard time killing things over two. Um, we got Living Totem, because we're playing Diamond, so we're playing Living Totem. That's kind of how it works. Um, as well as Four Soul Marbles as well, for the same reason. Um, they're really good with Ascendant, because you can give him a Spell Shield, and when he's flipped into uh, his second form, he's a little bit less vulnerable. Well, he's not at all vulnerable any longer, um, which is kind of nice to be able to get that guy alive. Three Repels, because we definitely need more um, removal spells in the deck. Um, the, the main purpose, purpose of the deck is to just control the board as much as possible and uh, just kind of grind your opponent out until you can start just rage firing them a million turns, um, which is where the Fulmination comes into play. Um, fulmination is usually pretty awful. In this deck, it hasn't been atrocious. Um, <laughs> it's about the best I can say for it. It's sweet with Ascendant, um, and the fact that it draws us into multiple Rage Fires and draws us into Heat Waves against the aggro decks and the Solitary Exiles against the more controlling decks. Um, 
has been really nice, but it's a, definitely a giant liability to give your opponent cards. So maybe something that going forward I may want to get rid of or whatever. Um, Heat Wave is so good currently. Um, there's a lot of Gorefeast running around, and most of the cards in Gorefeast is between, or are rather between one and two power, uh, toughness rather. So uh, Heat Wave is just amazing right now. So I really want to play a deck with Heat Wave in it. So that's where I kind of came to this one. Um, we got the Rage Fire, which is basically our, basically our main wing con. Um, obviously, Soul Marble gets there too, but um, maybe not our main wing con. But our most awesome wing con is uh, just be able to grab a uh, Rage Fire every turn with Ascendant and just Rage Fire our opponent in the face for a million. Um, we've got Lord Royal here. Card that um, most people kind of <laughs> look at oddly when I show them that it's in the deck. But um, the ability to shuffle in countered Rage Fires or, um, you know, nature ranged solitary exiles or get multiple copies of Heat Wave back in your deck or Repel or whatever kind of gives you a little more. Um, Resiliency almost. Um, also, the ability to get back cards with you use early, like Stone Skin or Burn to the Ground, um, to be able to get back for saving a uh, Ascendant later from a removal spell or saving you from a uh, Life Siphon to the face later in the game is just really nice. Uh, we got two Blind Lights, which is again really good against the Gore Storm, uh, Gore Feast decks, um, as well as again, you can use it to counter cards like Life Siphon or um, like. Other escalated rage fires to the face, stuff like that. Um, get the solitary exile here, which is really good against most decks currently. Um, it's kind of iffy because it's one of your only answers to marble, but the decks that play marble also play solitary exile, so they can kind of answer it themselves. But it has to be there because you have to have a way to answer marble, or else you kind of just die to it. Um, so I had to go with it. We got ascendant, which is. Um, Obviously, a card that a lot of people don't play with, and well, probably for good reason. Um, though it's something I've been wanting to play with for a long time, which is why I kind of threw it in the deck list here. Um, but again, maybe in the future you may want to go with changing the Ascendants and the Fulminations for something a little more um, better suited for the current meta. But Ascendant, once you flip an Ascendant, it's probably just game over against most decks. So, really powerful card and something I really wanted to play with. You have one of Argus here, which is, um, again, an, uh, I mean, it's an answer to Soul Marble, but it's 12 cost, so it's not really that great of an answer to Soul Marble. But um, it can take over games late in the game, especially if you have flipped Marble out and you play a, um, Argus. It's a 7-7 seven, seven flight that can tap to void a, um, void a card, which is really, really powerful. Um, probably not going to come into play most games because it is 12 cost, but um, it'll come into play occasionally and it'll just take over games for you, which is nice. Just a nice little bomb to have in the deck. Um, and then we have the reserves here. We have a second stone skin, which you probably bring against the blood matchups to, again, counter early um, Inquisitions as well as um, late game life siphons. We have three Frost Wizards, which are really good against um, cards like Inquisitor, which maybe aren't the hugest problem, but if you look at Endormi's deck there, it's probably going to come in against that kind of deck. Um, ones that really kind of abuse Inquisitor and, car and Escalation cards like. Um, Relentless Corruption and stuff like that. Uh, we've got four Protective Defenders with the uh, deal damage equal to its power gem. So it comes into play and it'll shock your opponent's face, um, essentially. So probably bringing that in for more of the control matchups. Just thing I wanted to test out, see how, how it worked out. Seems like a kind of sweet idea, so go with that. Um, we got th four Cloud Knights, mostly because they're beautiful, um, but also partially because they gain three life and they're a three-two flyer. So they're really good against the aggro matchups, which not that we really need a whole lot of help with, considering our deck seems kind of anti-aggro-ish. Um, but we definitely want to be taking out cards like Ascendant and Fulmination against them, so we want to bring in more ways to gain life and some more ways to actually beat through the air. Uh, we've got two Gabriels in the sideboard, which um, you probably can get some control matchup, get you more of a an, not like an aggressive feel because it's a six drop, but um, give you more threats to your deck that they can't really they may not be able to prepare it for us, so and they're probably going to take out their extinctions and such as you'll play the main troops. And you have one Eternal Guardian, which um, you're going to bring in against the... You're probably going to replace your Argus with the Eternal Guardian in the aggro matchups, because it's just better. Um, so yeah, that's the deck. Still a work in progress, as you guys can see, but it seems kind of sweet, so we want to try it out. So let's go into the games. All right, so we're with the coin flip now. Let's see who gets the ever-important space coin on their side. 
the only coin flip that matters in this best of five. I get to play first. Yep. Well, I can't mulligan this end. Ugh. So, this gun is uh, really decent. We have uh, all of uh, almost all of the thresholds. We have a, a, a more or less nice curve, so we're going to keep it. So, I know looking at this matchup, it kind of seems like it's completely one sided. Like, because I have just a million removal spells for the aggro matchups. But when we were playing the test games before, I was just getting ran over by how aggressive um, Endormia's deck can be. So, um, looks can be deceiving here. <laughs> Like this hand's sweet, but um, if you just keep slamming things like that, I'm gonna just get brutalized. Glow has been really, really good against you. Yeah, Glow has been disgusting. Do you so, know that you want to heave with that? Yeah, I kind of want to, but I'm not going to. I think I'd rather just hold it off. One for one seems kind of bad for me. So we bash here for two. Taking two like a champ. Yep. We play the Pyromancer just to be effective with our resources. So, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and rage fire that. Get that escalated. Uh, kill off his, his two one here. Um, it could be a little bit gross if he plays a claw next turn, which he's almost only going to. Um, but if it doesn't, nah, that's fine. Um, probably should have held off for a claw, but whatever. That's a good draw. Unfortunately, it does not um, a claw. Uh, mm. Close enough. So we are going to attack here. And I'm just going to hold back. Just in case he hit waves or something like that. Yeah, I'm gonna. I could probably. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Mm, no, I'm not gonna do it. I'll change my mind. Just gonna throw another blocker out there. Try to get him to overextend a little bit. Um, if he does a gore feast here, I'm gonna be taking a, roughly a metric ton of damage. Yep. So as Mythic put it, he's going to take a metric ton of damage. <laughs> so we're going to just Corpheus here. I do get to block two things with the gargoyle, gargoyle, so it does do a little bit of work there. Yep. Um, let's take seven the first attack, and then eight, then I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> Probably dead, so yeah. Dead. I had a heat wave there, I could have heat waved and played Soul Marvel, but I was kind of hoping to overextend a little bit more. I mean, the e if you had played heat wave, I could have played Inquisitor, deal. so you were at 14, right? Yeah. So you will have played uh, the Inquisitor, and uh, next time I could have Gorfis with Inquisitor and, uh, and this guy again. Yeah, I mean, I have Repel in it too, so I should have just Gorfis. I should have heat waved there, especially yeah. the Gorfis, but I got greedy. <clears throat> I mean, Gorfis is just uh, really, really, really good. I need them games. Yeah, I mean, I need, to, I need to always expect that you have it, though. You need to play four of them. I mean, I can't just hope you don't have it, because odds of you having it are pretty good. Well, so we are here on game two. Yep. So, I won the coin flip. I'm actually going to be on the play anyway, so it's nice. Yep. <laughs> this hand isn't awful. Definitely not as good as our previous one, but our previous one lost, so that ain't going to hell. We'll keep it. Leading off with a ruby, just because make him think we're going to burn his stuff. <laughs> you can think all you want. I'm still going to play my one drops. <laughs> so I didn't play around our burn, unfortunately. Try the next level one. Didn't work. Yeah, next level your burn. Yeah. He next leveled my next level. Yep. He previous leveled my level that was next. So, so now totem there. Yeah, now that he has Lamb's totem, it's probably less uh, 
doesn't want to, to hit the wave as much. We'll see. Yeah. So taking two here, like a boss. The amount of cares are roughly at zero. I see your cares and I raise it by one. <laughs> and by two. That's a little gross. Yep. It's a little bit on the gross side. So um, I'm gonna pump my mar my totem rather on my turn because I don't want to get burned. <laughs> and if he does have a burn, he's gonna have to himself to get rid of the uh, totem. Yep. Sure, you don't want to attack? Nope. I'll make a game three, but that doesn't seem that great. Ooh. <laughs> so, mm. so. The maniacal laugh makes me think you do something pretty good there. <laughs> no, it just. Uh, did you uh, you play around the burn correctly? Of course, I play around burn correctly. Have you seen me? I play around everything correctly. So. We attack here. The Savage Raider is all upside because we don't have to click them for uh, for us to attack. Yeah, so we're gonna block there. He's gonna he's gonna have a burn anyway, but at least he has a two form so he can really totem that's around me. Yeah, now the the thing is do I want to to burn a totem? The answer is probably yes. So let's go with that. Actually I have three cards in hand. Um let's see what we draw here. Not a resource, huh? I don't think I can give him the opportunity to go off these next turns. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and heat wave here. Yeah, I think that will have been game. That will be 3, 6, plus 8. Yeah. 14 is actually lethal. Yep, if I no, had. I, I could have I I done something different, but I think I'd rather save it for later. Yeah. So, no resource, so we are forced to play that. Um <sighs> I think I'm just gonna the marble here and start pumping that up. Let's see if we get the results here. I know if I flip a marble it's really hard for him to win the game, if I can start getting six life a turn. So I'm gonna take the chance of a. Uh, Taking a bit of beatings, which I am taking now. Yep. Sure, the haste. Essentially, it is, yeah. Well, speed, rather. Yep. So I'm at 8 here, which is uh, a little bit on the disgusting side. Oh, mar marble to 1, get that, that clock taken. Yep. Certainly, the resources are really nice. Um, I think I'm going to just display. Um, if he has a resource plus score feast, I'm in a bit of trouble. But at least this play allows me not to die to something stupid. I could have done this, but again, if he doesn't score feast, I don't really want to use this. So it doesn't really. Makes sense to play around Gore Feast and then him not play it. Um, I'm not gonna block the totem. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. That goes back to our hand. Yeah, he still has two turns to, have to re get the resource to cast it though, so. That's fine. So the good thing is, he, if he hit waves, he cannot protect the, the totem unless he gets a resource plus hit wave, and he was stuck on resources before, so. Let's hope he doesn't get it. And he does get it. So. Don't the heat wave though. No. No, well. Good gain two there, but. Mm -hmm. 
Should have taken it to actually I should have gained two there. That was a mistake. Well if you gain two, I know you have blinding light. If you attack with that, it says no no other card that makes sense. To play around. So Still missing the Ruby for Gorpies, which is really nice for me. Yep, it is. So, I can get my Totem Flight and block the 4 1, taking 4 going to 2. Um, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and heat wave here, though. Uh, but I'm not here, though. Hmm. Yeah, if you go without play and I have uh, a burn, you die, so. Yeah. It's a little unfortunate because it's a better play to hold it for, you know, a heat wave. It's not a bad play to not die, so I guess that's fun. Yeah. So now it's do I want to play something else? He doesn't have a heat wave because he will have played last turn, so that's good for us. If I play this and I get the results, he just dies next turn, which is really nice. But the thing is, does he? Do we need to do that? The answer is probably not. So, probably just pass. So pump our marble in a turn, and hopefully we draw either a heat wave or a ruby. Heat wave would obviously be better, but ruby wouldn't be bad either. That's neither of those things. Um, if he has a burn, I just die. You play Because the just kills a totem anyway, so I can't even, like, do that. Not a whole lot I can do here, getting stuck on the single ruby threshold. And also drawing zero heat waves. One heat wave, three heat wave. Oh. Yep. <laughs> so now we get that, which is really, really nice. So... Let's see how I do. I want to sequence this to play around as much of stuff as possible. So I'm for sure attacking with these guys. Do I want to attack with the Falconer too? Give these guys, give this guy flight. He can block this guy. He has another blinding light. He blocks this guy. He has repel plus totem buff, he can gain 2, repel this guy, go up to 8. He has repel plus block. It's gross. Uh, yeah, I think I die with this thing. Let's see what happens. I'll do this slide. If he has a burn, I'm just dead anyway, so. Yep. Yep, so. Unfortunate. Couldn't get there. So, we go to sideboarding now? Yep, we go to sideboarding. Some guy wanted to battle me that badly. Um, so, for our sideboards, we're going to bring in. I already, already kind of went ahead of myself here. Uh, we got, we're going to bring in four Spear Cl Cloud Knights, three Frost Wizards. Um, the Frost Wizards may not even be worth I'm actually not going to bring the Frost Wizards in. Um, we're bringing the four Spear Cliff Cloud Knights, the Stone Skin to kind of protect our troops from his burns, and the uh, Eternal Guardian. So, Your Eternal taking Guardian. out. It's better than Argus. <laughs> Ugh. So <laughs> fucking slow. <laughs> yeah, it's not as slow as Argus. Um, I'm also going to bring in one Gabriel because one more card, so it's at least another uh, nice body to block with. But yeah, hopefully, we should draw. Like a ton of heat waves against them. <laughs> That's essentially what it comes down to. If we could draw a million heat waves, we're good. So, um, yeah, post that where we have the uh, Cloud Knights, the Gabriels, the Eternal Guardian, and the Stone Skins to kind of help us stay alive a little longer, hopefully. Um, yeah, that's about all I got for sideboarding. So, let's see what we got. So, here on the sideboard, our sideboard is not a uh, super thunder against uh, his matchup. So, we probably don't want to sideboard much. 
the main consideration is do we want to add the flies to the to the deck or no? That's basically all that the, there is to it. We haven't seen anything that is murder worthy. It's only the totem, but the totem usually just dies to burn. And the uh, and the cavalry we cannot kill it, kill it by murders so is not a uh, fantastic. Ember Spice, which is nice to counter Dimit, but usually Dimit is way too slow. So it usually doesn't matter. Bonesmith doesn't hit anything we see we've seen. So the only two cards that can uh, have some consideration coming in are Cosfly and uh, Blood Aura. Uh, Blood Aura so far doesn't do much. It can sell a couple of life, which could be relevant, but uh, as of right now, we have not seen uh, that being an issue. So we probably, they probably don't come in, come in uh, so soon. And the cost flies. I mean, they are nice. They get, they have a patient, but no, nothing, nothing else. They're a little bit clunky too. So, so I think that if it is, uh, this it's only the second game. I just don't sideboard anything. And if I was in a competitive match, uh, after he, I, after I know what he's sideboarding, I will sideboard against it. So I have no protection from he do it. That is the card that uh. That it could cause me more problems, and I haven't seen anything uh, good enough for uh, for me to bring anything else. So I'm just going to to save the deck as, as it is, and go to game three. Yeah, I made one tr one change after uh, my initial sideboarding, which was taking at the Lord Goyles for keeping in the uh, two of the ascendants, because at least they can trade with things and uh, potentially be used to gain me some life if need be. Just a little bit more. They should a little bit more than the uh, Lord Royal is doing the matchup. The Lord Royal blo blocking two troops is nice. At least they, they both block two troops if they get into a uh, combat for the most part, but one um, trades with them instead. So. Yep, so now let's go to the games. <laughs> so let's draw again. This hand's also awful. So it's good if I... Uh, I have to mulligan too, so... This, yeah, this sounds fine. It's so, not great, but it's something. So I don't think we can get the dots with this hand. Or oh, Savage Raider with 6 resources is probably not good enough. So we mulligan that. Mulligan actually hurts the deck. And this hand is terrible. Uh, 3 close, 2 Inquisitors, 1 resource. It's not what we want. And going down to 5 is really really bad again, so uh, with our deck, we'll keep this one. It's not well, it's much. not bad when I've held some Logan to 5. <laughs> yeah, and but, on the play. Yeah, but this deck needs to hit uh, its, um, its, uh, its, uh, its, uh, its thresholds as fast as possible. So uh, starting with less cards, it truly really hurts. Yeah, I mean, my plan post cyborg against you definitely is not at all to have my Ascendant flip, so me being down on cards isn't as huge a deal. Um, but I do have no card draw now main deck. Where my only source of card draw before was the Fulmination, which is absolutely awful in this matchup. It's awful in most matchups, but especially this one. Um, I'm gonna throw a totem down and start pumping it because I wanna be ag as aggressive as possible. I think I just unplugged my computer, my uh, monitor though, so I can't see <laughs> what's happening currently. So I'm just gonna keep it in space while I'm passing the turn. So let's see what we draw. When Mythic decides to pass the turn, okay. Hey man, I'm trying to get my monitor to actually be viewable. So we are going to burn that totem before he gets another resource and can win at the game with just that? So we are stuck on resources. Yeah, I was kind of hoping we wouldn't have a, a burn there. Figure you may have taken it out. But, um, I guess seeing totems means keep him in. Yep. So we'll play our marble out here and just start pumping that. Probably should have done this last turn instead of Totem, but if I can slam Totem and start be beating his face in if he couldn't burn it there. Especially on Mold of 5, odds of having a burn are yeah. quite as high. So no blood, so we cannot play it or all the thing, but we'll play our our guy. And hopefully he doesn't have a removal spell, that'll be the greatest. Or if he got his rage fire and he doesn't have the threshold for it. Other thing, um, clearly referring to Claw the Mountain God. 
for those of you at home who don't know what the other thing means. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so let's see if we can get a blood here. And we do, so that's really nice. So you drew a ruby threshold there just on time. Just in time. Yeah, you were so dead if you didn't uh, add the, that ruby threshold. Yep. Let's get my face on a little, please. Thank you. Unfortunately, I have a second rage, but i deal with that one. Yeah, that seems really, really good. This is a pretty good mold of five. It's yeah. pretty easy mold of five. That's pretty disgusting. So in a matchup of mold of fives, I feel like my deck may be favored. <laughs> yeah, especially <laughs> having a... my deck's ever favored. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, we'll still... Well, still not that's over. Still that's close. a good top deck, yeah. I agree. Let me get that heat wave, so... I can't ask for much, I guess. I've already gotten this far. Yep. I mean, you can flip the marble. I can flip the marble, yeah, but you I mean... Falconer for marble is a fine trade for you. Well... Okay. Let's just flip my marble. If he wants to trade his entire field for a marble, I'm gonna go with that, I guess. If he plays a core fly, I'm a little bit pissed. But the more chances he gets to draw cards, the worse he can get from me, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just bash him for six here and gain six life. So and again, if he wants to trade his entire field for the marble, I'm okay with it. Yeah. So this is a uh, thing uh, I want to block and I don't want to block. So if I do not block here, he goes down to 26. And uh, killing him becomes uh, an issue. So I probably have to block, but I have nothing in hand. He has a totem or a marble as a follow up. Can be really, really bad. So. I mean, that was basically extinction plus gain six life for me there, which yep. is okay with me. I mean, losing the marble sucks, but I shouldn't do it, you know. If he didn't block there, he shouldn't take six is perfect with me. So I pass it on. We would have loved to draw a creature, but we did not. So if I could draw a totem here, it would be amazing. That's not a bad one either. Fortunately, we're going to sit back and just be reactive now, which is what we kind of want to be doing anyway, but um, his deck's very hard to react to. We are drawing really, really badly now. Charge of Fate was our worst possible draw of the deck, by far, and we drew both of them. So that's a really, 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 this is really top nice deck. top deck. Yeah, that's cool quality game. <laughs> That's a good one though. Yeah, it's pretty gross. It's probably not going to matter. Um I think I have to kill that just in case he has a uh gore feast here. I'm just decimated. So I'm gonna go ahead and just Rage fire it, keep escalating that up. The third one, in a mold to five, just want to to make sure. I mean, I could have heat waved it. Would rather that. I'm just saying. <laughs> <sighs> Another resource, really. So, like your mold to five was that bad. You got falconer, you got claw, you got burn. Mine was better. I'll give you it. I'm just I mean. Saying. Two, two, two marbles, <laughs> totem, triple rage fire. I don't know, that, that, there's a little bit of uh, inconsistency in there. <laughs> I'm just saying, you were no slouch yourself. Um, So next turn he gets to flip the marble, and there's not much I can do about it. <sighs> there's only two plays, I can replay the Inquisitor, I can do this. 
uh, none of them are great. Yeah, so put, I figured you can play the Inquisitor there. Um, unfortunately, you can still replay it if I kill it next turn, but uh, hopefully we can just keep drawing disgustingly and be, you know, not to worry about anything he does. I mean, you don't need to draw disgustingly with a uh, soul color and play. That's the I mean, point. I want more. Sorry, my dog's barking in the background. Apparently, it's his playtime. It's always playtime. It's always play time, it's fair. It's very fair. So we're gonna flip our marble here, gain six, go to twenty-six again. Basically undo the uh, damage done by the Inquisitor. And we still have um a really nice card in hand here. So let's go to twenty six, shall we? Too close to twenty six land. Yep. Um I'm mildly terrified of Gorefeast, as I probably should be. Um, I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna pull the trigger on it. That's super, super aggressive. I know, I know. But if you Gorefeast there, I'm just, I, I feel. You like don't. I, just, I do nothing if I Gorefeast there. You do. You do stuff. You Gorefeast. That's what you do. Yeah, and I lose my. My Inquisitor, so that's terrible drum. Any creature here will have been fantastic. Falconer is especially really, really nice. So we just get here and die, basically. Yeah, I, I was playing loose there, but only because my cavalry allow, allows me to do so. I think that that opened a room for me to top deck, while keeping the hitway wouldn't allow me to top deck. I mean, we still yeah. have a game, but... I need something like Falconer, I need now. Yeah, it's fair. I should have kept it for the Falconer. Which really your best top deck against me would have been Falconer. Yep. But I do not get it, so... Not much we can do here. So that was a bad draw. So that's only considering what we got. One. Hey, I drew eight resources. We're both in the same amount of resources. I just drew a little bit better cards than you. Um. So there's an argument for chopping here because there may not be another, another time to chump block. But we'll just take it. It gives me my the best chance of winning, which is potentially zero. Yeah. Another resource. We just drew really really poorly in a in this one. So, I think that's one chance of winning the game. I don't know if it's enough, but I'm going to go for it. Alright, well that really sucks. So... Yeah, it's not, it's not enough, so... I mean, it's not enough yet, but still, I don't like it. You get three attacks now? I should get three attacks, yeah. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Just like seven there, and then nine next turn, it's still not. Alright, so you're dead. Yep. If I had to draw something better, this, these last two turns will be in fine. So I had the Gorfis all, all game long. Yeah, I mean, luckily the Heat Wave play there didn't punish me, but. Definitely missed by all my part to do that. Yep. I mean, how many life you gain? Uh, uh, 18, 24? Well, you, you got... Uh, how many shards of fate do you play in your deck? Four. Yeah. Okay, so... How many did you draw? So two of them, most probably? So, so you gain uh, 18 life and you got down to 8? Yeah. So, oh. Pretty gross. If you could. I mean, getting double cavalry, triple rage fire was really. Yep. We got there. I mean, also breaking. I, I just break, basically. So, we won the battle of the multi fives. Let's see if we win an actual battle this time. <laughs> yep. We're on the play now, which can be a really, really nice for us. 
Yeah, it's disgusting for him. That's like the worst thing for me. Is he being on the play? Yeah, you we, you have been on the on the on the play on all these three games, I think. Yeah. Four. Should have been on the uh, on the draw one game, but got ruined. So things may have been a little different had we uh, not had that one game get ruined. But was it, you know, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm on the draw. Yep. Which isn't horrible. Considering now he can potentially overextend into our uh, heat waves a little bit better. Well, um, looks like we're gonna be mulligan into a million again. This hand is not not fast, but it's really really powerful. So we're going to keep. I want your opinion on this one, Dormi. Um, I have zero resources. Do I mulligan that one? Uh, what do you as as a friend, as a competitor, as a rival? As a as a friend. You should keep a greedy man. Greed is good. <laughs> if the hand is sweet enough, you're on the draw, you can go home. Top deck uh, results, 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 and go home. That's true. I probably should have, yeah. I had a lot of two drops too, so I just got the resource, resource, and probably fine. This hand's not great either, though. But, uh, him not having a one drop is so sweet. Yep. Well, that's like the worst possible top deck you could have there. The absolute, like, if I had to rank it, I'd say that's a 10. So a 2-drop <laughs> a, a here will be fantastic. <laughs> a blood will also be good. And that's the worst of like, well not the worst, the worst of being charged of fate. We'll pass the turn. But we do need to get a blood. For potentially next turn. Would be the best. Well, that's a nice one. Unfortunately it doesn't, <clears throat> doesn't actually need to be played out but still hitting a race was there is just what we wanted to hit. Yep. See if we can get a blood. Oh man. So, nope. So we can start sinking our resources into our marble and reacting to whatever else he does. Yep. Um, which is basically the game of Hex, for those of you who aren't <laughs> aware <Yep>. of that. <laughs> this is how Hex works. You sit back, pump a marble, and react to everything they do. Oh man. <laughs> this is retarded. <laughs> So, I can potentially do this, <laughs> which is mediocre. I guess it's better than nothing. Something like Gore Feast here. Yep. Hmm. You can repel. The fact that he did that makes me really want to repel. That means his hand's very, very bad. No, my hand is really, really good because I'm waiting. A, I'm wasting a golf on this. Thing is, I cannot yeah. play my hand. I'm talking about very, very bad. You can't play your hand. <laughs> it's not really a good hand if you can't play it, right? I mean, it could be oh, go for golf for all you know. I'm gonna go ahead and call that. Yeah. It does slow down my marble a little bit, but um, nine damage is just not really what I'll be taking. Yeah, I was fine with the trail. Rather, you take it, but. Would really like the diamond there. Um, not that it matters all that much at this point, but um, I'm assuming he has a claw in hand, at least one claw in hand. Oh and god, this that. is yours. I just cannot, uh, cannot believe what's happening. So we just passed again. <sighs> so. The obligatory marble pump here. Yeah, uh, that's probably game. I just cannot play anything. <sighs> my, my hand was really, really good. I think there was no way of mulling on that hand. We just got super lucky with our draws. Super, super lucky. Um, just gonna pass here. Unfortunately, I need a six resource there. Um, yeah. I mean, a fifth resource there. So, just does game. Uh, so, Mythic, will you have mulling on a hand, which is Claw? A Inquisitor, double Gorfis, double Ruby, and a, and a Blood? I think the answer is never. Uh, it's a little slow. You want to be more aggressive than that. Uh, I feel like. it, I it, is, it, it is slow, but it's double Gorfis, Claw, and Inquisitor. And I can and I have shit. Well, I have eight, uh, eight two drops. I have uh, 13, no, 12, 12 sources of, uh, of Blood in my deck to be able to play on Corf. I have I mean, eight, I'm not eight, the best two drops. To ask for this question because I never mulligan ever, so <laughs> I probably wouldn't mulligan it. But it it 
I could see an argument for mulliganing it for sure. I mean, the thing is, I I, I see like uh, more than fifty percent of my deck are good draws, with the bad draws being additional gore feast, uh, the additional additional close if we don't get the 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 blood charge. So actually, the only bad draws are more rubies, and we just drew three in a row. So yeah, would have probably killed for a diamond there. But it really doesn't matter. We just you just win here. Yeah, I mean I have double rage fire in hand too, but you know, wants to gain that life, man. Play a totem out because why not? Yeah, well, it's getting burned. No. Does not that it matters at this point, but yeah, that's a thing. Old blade. But we are really just going through the motions. Fire there. And I'll bash him for six. Yep, seems pretty good. Could burn him in the face for four. Yeah, let's do that actually. I just kill him next turn. I will have saved that, but sure. I have a, I have a burn to grab my hand too, so he just died. Oh, yeah. Of yes. Well, not regardless. I actually miscounted my resources there. Thought I had five. But no, can draw a resource. Well, talk to me about that. <laughs> Tell me hey, about that, please. You've drawn more resources than me, at least. You just haven't drawn the colors you needed. Yeah, oh, only that uh, the that card I drew was the worst draw on my, on my whole deck. Wow, wow, wow. So we had that diamond we wanted. Yep, pretty good. Again, doesn't matter. We just yeah, really break. Yeah. We just break for five turns in a row. Just nothing we can afford. So we're just going to take it and not bother blocking. <laughs> the rage takes six damage. No, there's no rage. There's no top deck for me, and the game was over. I should have surrender. But I I haven't just because this is a, a video recording. That's basically okay. the only reason. So let's go to game five. Which actually game five. I think this is the first time ever. That we get to a game five uh, two two. Actually this is the fifth game. <laughs> I <Yeah>. lost track. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Having too much fun, I did anything my deck was supposed to do. Uh <laughs> This hand is not fantastic. We'll keep it, but it's not fantastic. Well, if we've learned anything from these matchups, um, Soul Marble's good, so I'll keep this hand. I mean, Soul Marble is the best card in the set by far. By a lot. By not even close margin. Yep. I believe the second best card in the set is Gorefist. Which is also argue, really good. I would not argue that at all. I'd probably say the second best card in the format as well. Um, but other people would probably say Angel, but. I don't think that's no way. true at all. So we need a blood, and that's not a blood. We'll take it, but that's not a blood. Ruby, marble. Yep, seems good. Nope. So unfortunately, this hand's lacking removal, which is a weird thing for us to have. But yeah. and we cannot play around the removal, so yeah. well. If I could only draw a rage fire, not a rage fire. Yeah, if you draw a heat wave, it's it's game. <laughs> if I draw a heat wave, I'll, I may jump up and down. Not that it's that great of a heat wave, but you know. it's fantastic. <laughs> I it's told you, it wins you the game if you draw it. So let's we'll see what we get. A blood so resource is really good. Flip a marble here, though. There's uh, a chance there. Don't think it's super high, but there's a chance. Fortunately, we did not hit our resource to be able to use the hero power here. Um, I think I kind of have to do this just to uh, slow him down a bit. Do I want to take seven? Yep. 
I think that's uh, the best play. So the best play or bad play? No, the best play. Okay. Because uh, that does means I cannot pump my troops anymore, and the hero power, you're also saving an additional extra damage from the the hero power. When yeah, I draw, the hero so. power, then Gorefeast next turn, I just destroyed without even having a chance of trying. Yeah, that's just not going to happen, don't worry. So, where's fire that? I mean, for you not having removal, you have a lot of it. Back to my top deck, man, come on. My deck is 90% removal spells. <laughs> I just have to draw them. My opening hand was double marble, totem, and a bunch of resources. Uh, yeah. Oh well. So we attack with those. Not much we can do about it. So this is at one. So this is still a little bit far away. Which is really, really nice. So, um. Again, go if he gets a resource in Gorfeast, we're just dead. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Heat wave? No. Um, not bad, though. Yep, not bad. Totally. Shouldn't play this as a blocker. It's probably gonna get burnt, but... Yep. So if we draw results, we win the game. Let's see if we yep, can make it. Uh, and of course we don't. Ah, uh, so this this game, my, my draws this happen. game has been like the worst ever. Well, <laughs> last 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 game were the worst ever. But th these last two games, my my deck has been just laughing at me at my draws. So hopefully you don't get the results. I have a resource in hand. Yeah, whatever. Really, whatever. <laughs> uh, I just cannot believe this. I really can't. My hand is triple inquisitor. Triple inquisitor. So yeah. If I hadn't top deck to removal spell every turn, and been able to pump my marble with the excess ones, game was all in dormies there. But we got some lucky top decks to get out of that one. It's not just the lucky uh, top decks. I just break like a boss again. Well, yeah. I mean, like the lucky top decks helped me not die to you, still breaking like a boss. Because if you had the two. uh yeah, but, but you had to avoid something yeah. like 20 cards uh, I had to draw in my deck for like 3 turns in a row. 20 cards will have been game. Or something like that. All these all these turns, so... It just sucks balls, yeah. And I get it now, of course. So, let's see. Uh, can Gorfis, he takes... Four. But there's no other play for me, so let's go with that. It just really sucks balls. No, I, I take more than four, I take seven. Yeah, full seven, whatever. Probably should have killed off the, uh, Saturday since it's gonna stick around, but yep. I mean, it doesn't matter. Cannot blow with it, so. But yeah, of course, we get the the results one turn too late. Yeah. Again. I mean, it's still not over. If we get a blood, we can potentially rebuild. But still pretty bad. What's the nice little one diverse to get here, too? Yep, that's game. A little extra life train. Yeah. Uh, these were yours, terrible. Terrible back to both draws. Yeah. We get uh, a blood, but it's just not going to be enough. We can do another game if you want, since you got messed up on draws. No, right? no, it's uh, it happens. Yeah, he can't really do anything to make it plus. I, I'm almost sorry I didn't play uh, Crushing Blows. I wasn't really paying attention. To I do like. play one Crushing Blow, I believe. You play one iron, yeah. Maybe not. So it would have been bad had, I, had he had a crushing blow there. Yeah. Fortunately, it didn't matter. So you win the game here. We just saw Tyrek Tail with the uh, Inquisitor and Bastion for eight. Yep. Uh, nine, rather. Yep. A little salty about this, Ross. Really, really bad. Let's do one more of the game then, because 
you don't want it to end on just back to back games and drawing badly, right? So let's do one more game. No, no, no. It's five. they're fast enough games. It's fine. No, no, no. It's it's best of five. <laughs> it's best of five. You 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 win three two. That's well. So there's already six games because we had one get messed up on us. So yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> Right. But but I basically <laughs> lost to to do a stop decking bad, so it's it's not like I play badly. Not that you can play badly with this deck. So the results are are really in the deck. Which is yeah, I mean, you have a lot of um. Well, you have a lot of double threshold. You just have the the inquisitors at you know four double threshold there. I have eight got... eight double blood, and I have four double ruby with the hero power. Yeah. So realistically, realistically, I only need a. Uh, if I want, to, I just want to have two and two on on turn four. I don't need to have two and two on, on turn four, but yeah. Just keep drawing rubies and rubies and rubies and rubies was really really bad. On the yeah. fourth game and on the fifth game, not drawing a resource at all, when it would have been amazing in so many. So many draws would have been uh, really bad. I think the deck's sweet though. Like uh, the uh, Inquisitor plus Gorfi seems really, really cool. Like a really, really powerful thing to have. Yeah, it's probably a little bit too cute, and probably don't want to 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 have it. I may not want to have them main deck. I have something else main deck to make it faster. It's probably something like Priestess. So they are they are a little bit too slow. But yeah, but they they get some. They give you a little bit more reach too with the. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, priests are probably fine for the deck because you wanted to get. It's also a little bit of card advantage if they die. Yeah. Plus, you get rebuild from uh, extinctions and heat waves and such. Yeah, well, you don't really rebuild, but yeah. Then the only issue with that is an, an, another additional card that dies to sorrow, and we already have uh, a bunch of them in the deck. It is not uh, what we want. But again, I, I'm fine with how how the the matches went. I won the the first two games pre sideboard. And then I lost the mulligan to five game, where I just draw worse than you. You draw really, really well on the mul to five, and then I just break on the next two games, which uh, which happens. Yeah, I mean, and if my deck didn't show anything of like that, we don't already know, which is just marble is ridiculous. Yeah, I think I think <laughs> all the games I lost, even I had stumbled on resource and marble was on turn two every game. Yeah, I mean. I think the way to go with this deck is just to get rid of the um, aspirant plan with the fulmination and all that stuff. Maybe go for more, like, even just like judgment. They like, put King Gabriel's in judgments and uh, maybe even resurrection to get back flipped marbles that die from judgments and such. I mean, the, I good, th the good thing about re resurrection is that you are going to get one activation before it gets exiled or whatever. The bad part yeah. is that it's probably going to get discarded if you're facing uh, Blood Diamond Control. Yeah. It sucks because it's a really sweet card. Really, really powerful card. I would, I'd like it. It's something I'd love to play, but it's it's com pretty much completely unplayable in the current meta. Yeah. It's also the, like, other people are going to sideboard um, uh, Constant Hate due to the Soul Marvel and Solitary Exiles, so even then it's not a, a safe sideboard. Uh, against small sex, as they're going to to have some some removal for it. Yeah, so I don't have it in the sideboard because I just I know it's just going to be an awful nine drop in my hand most games. Which I mean, Argus has been pretty bad for the most part, as well as uh, the Guardian Edge. The one game is just an awful top deck as well. But um, still nice to have the uh, Argus in the deck just for the uh, later games. I think uh, I should uh, take uh, putting Wither's out on the side and and add uh, four priestesses on the main deck just to get to make it uh, make the deck faster. Or maybe k keep uh, one or two Inquisitors, but I probably don't want four on the on the main. They are way too slow and a little bit clunky. Uh, as when yeah. I when I draw just multiple of them, which ha which will happen. Uh, the two last games I drew three of them and three of them again on my first. It was really really bad. We want to draw one or two. At most, and we draw, want to draw it la uh, later. To be fair, I pr should probably have Mulligan the the hand, uh, that last hand. But 
uh, with yeah, when playing this kind of like you have to to risk something because uh, you have to risk as if you if the game goes longer than game six or so, marble gets flipped and you just die, basically. This marble is really really hard to answer. Uh, we don't have many answers to that. Well, no not this like but in the set overall. So yeah, I mean marble is just it's a giant problem. <laughs> this is the best card in the set by so much. Yeah, <laughs> by the not even close. Yeah, the issue with Marvel is the how how hard it is to answer. There are not really good answers to it. Well, not great answers to it. There are good answers to it or decent answers to it. But there's nothing like great. It kills it uh, every time. Potentially, it's all the judgment and it's clunky as a skill. Yeah, it re requires a lot of things. Like we were, I was playing with a lot of judgment decks. You guys watched my stream and such, and uh, it's it's. Just so it requires you to have so many things to play that go correctly for you to actually have it be good, which is the problem with it. But it, it's definitely a very sweet ability and something I would definitely want to look into more. But I think currently it's just not enough there for it because it takes out cards like it take you can't play two of the best cards in your deck, which is so marble and totem because totem dies to your own judgments and marble dies to your own judgments for the most part. So you want to be judging for more than two because you want to deal with other people's marbles. So you won't be judging for like four, which then kills off your totems, your marbles, and your exiles, which are like the three best diamond cards in the set, aside from Angel, obviously. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I ha I also have wanted to play uh, a judgment deck for so long, but it just really, really, really clunky because the, the best cards on the, on diamond are super low cost, and they get all blown away from them, and the rest of the cards are not comparatively good enough to to play instead of those. Just to run to judgment, and it's not really that that great to splash either. Yeah, I mean, I think there's still something there, but it might be there instead too. As opposed to that one, I actually think there's enough to build around with it. Yeah, I mean the the, the main issue with uh, with how this goes on marble is hey, how few interactions uh, marble allows, as we don't have any addict effects. Nor troops that kill if blocked or something like that, something yeah. similar to Death Touch in uh, in in that other game. Something like lethal, which we assume is you know when it deals damage, the the other troop dies. Yeah. Um, so I think that's really what we kind of need for the like our right? marble decks. Yeah. Yeah. Th there was just so so many things uh, to that people have potentially made marble less unfair, but it, unfortunately they they didn't change it, and that's not going to change uh, for now. But yeah, also the last thing I wanted to say about the deck is that the deck I, uh, I built is really, really more or less cheap. Especially if we take the Inquisitor's house and put a uh, less on the some of the side, you can build it for probably something well less than thirty bucks for sure. And if we take the Inquisitor's house, probably for like twenty, twenty-five. We just play a couple of them. So if you you want to to go to a uh, budget deck, this could be uh, an option. Yeah, I mean, mine's only like 52 bucks too, something like that. Actually, sideboard makes it a little more expensive. <laughs> if you have four ponies and uh, all of a sudden sideboard makes it a little bit more expensive. But the main deck is where you'll be playing mostly, and it's about 52 bucks. With four in four marbles and four totems being about four bucks each. I mean, so. your deck wants angels. It really wants angels. Oh, it it, it craves angels. It, it begs me every day for angels. I just don't currently have them because I'm not going to pay the price for them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably what I, I want to do. Just play less Inquisitors and more Ducks by Priestess to make the game, uh, the game, the deck a little bit faster and more consistent. As the amount of four draws we have is quite high for this kind of deck. But that's basically all for today. So I'll talk about the big giveaway. If you don't have anything else to say, Mythic or. No, I'm I'm good. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> feel, feel pretty good. Go. It looks like I'm going to three wins against you. Yeah, that's nice. the the second <laughs> the second time you you are here and the second time you you win against me. I'm undefeated, man. So it is. Yep. Can't be stopped. Won't be stopped. <laughs> we'll play. We <laughs> we will play in the shuffler in our defense. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, similar to to every week, we'll do a, a giveaway. On the hexdev forums, you just need to to comment about the the video in the article. There should be a link to the to the article in 
in the description this week's below. Giveaway, um, this week's giveaway is going to be a date with Endormi. He flies you out to Spain, and you guys go on this little romantic date. Um, I'm entering another much for sure. I'm just saying, starting out there, you should probably enter that one. Yeah, it's old courtesy of Mythic Fismon. He's the, <laughs> the one that pays for all of that. But yeah, no, no yeah. seriously, it's just a, a drop butcher plus three packs code. So if you want to enter, as I said, just comment on the on the Hextech forums, and we will pick uh, one uh, at random to get the 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 butcher. So that's basically it. So until next week, bye. Bye guys. And three, two, one.